In August 1987, the Associated Press News Service published a piece about a boxing match planned between Mike Tyson and Tyrell Biggs. Biggs said he had a plan to beat the heavyweight champion Mike Tyson. But the man they call Iron Mike was not impressed. He calmly replied, everybody has plans until they get it for the first time. Do these words from Mike remind you of yourself? Have you ever been in a situation where you were getting up for a crucial meeting, were excited about impressing your colleagues, your boss or the client, but ended up paralyzed by indecision, inaction? If yes, then this video is for you. Here's what happened with me once. I was asked to deliver a client presentation that has come up. It was a last moment meeting and I only had one evening to prepare. I decided to put together my PPD after office in the evening. I reached home, excited at the opportunity at hand, and started planning all the steps. Researching about the client would take about two hours, then time to put together my PPD. Um, I thought about making it a bit more impressive and decided to add animations. So um, a little effort here and there, maybe about 60 minutes working on the flow, and boom, I had a great PPD. Everything seems super easy. I remember taking out my laptop and was about to start working when I realized I did not have a dry clean suit to wear tomorrow in the meeting. So I decided to buy myself a new suit. I had been delivering presentations before but I was working from home and work from office had begun recently. So I did not have a suit. Five seconds into that decision again I noticed I needed a haircut. I did not want my colleagues or my seniors to feel that I was a slob, so I decided to go to a salon. Five seconds into that decision, I got into a worry loop thinking, what if I did not have time to prepare that PPT? And what if, if I started working on the PPT and the market closed? I could shop first, but what if the PPT wasn't ready on time? And what if I reach office late? The client might get upset because of me because they have to wait for no reason. I kept deciding one thing and then changed my mind time and again and I kept doing this again and again and again and again. In the end, I wasted about two precious hours worrying about how to get everything done on time and I decided to get a haircut on the next day while going to office and in the end, I managed to do everything only 20 minutes late. I reached office 20 minutes late and I took out my phone and checked a message while in the elevator that was from my TL that said the meeting was delayed by an hour. What a waste. This happened with me because I anticipated everything that could go wrong. And that made me anticipate and think about more things that could go wrong. Until I got stuck into a loop of fear, anxiety and indecisiveness doing nothing. If the story of indecisiveness, inaction or anything similar has happened with you, then it might start to change with this video. In this video today, I'm going to share with you simple neuroscience back tricks that can help you escape this indecisiveness and inaction loop and fight you out of your anxiety, worry and fear. If you watch this video with great attention, pause, rewind, play, take actionable notes, I can guarantee you that while your peers are anxious and worried about similar situations, you will stand out and you will be able to face all the stressful similar situations calmly with courage and great strategy. How? Let's dive in. To understand why your brain worries, let us break the human brain in three simple parts. Part one, the feeling brain or let's call it the monkey brain. Number two, the thinking brain or let's call it the human brain and part three, the habit brain, let us call it the machine learning or technology brain. Now, let us deep dive into the monkey brain, which is called technically as the limbic system. See, this brain has been with us even when we were monkeys six to seven million years ago. Back then, it was a dangerous world and our mind, our brain paid a lot of attention to any hustle or rustling sound from the bushes. Back then, it was a very serious world and only the hyper alert survived. So the monkey brain got trained to keep on high alert and to be very vigilant of any threat, any stress and to alert us immediately and to generate and run or escape or a, a way response. 
Now, the job of this brain is to do just this, not to understand mathematics, not to understand rules, no frameworks, no system, no technology. This brain is still with us and is only responsible for the emotions inside us, emotions like fear, anxiety, love, or any other emotions. Now today, whenever you get into a stressful situation or a serious situation, the monkey brain gets activated thinking that it's an emergency situation. It's a life-threatening situation. But the monkey brain doesn't know that it's not so common today that we get into those life-threatening situations every now and then. But it's not its fault. The monkey brain evolved that way to keep you alive. Now let us talk about the second brain which made humans go from being monkeys to humans and to being the rulers of the world. The thinking brain. Technically, it's called as the prefrontal cortex and is responsible for all the higher order activities like thinking, planning, judging, calculations and everything. It's the most recently developed part of the human brain and it's mostly and largely available only to the humans. Now, the third brain is the habit brain or as we call it, the machine learning brain. Technically, it's known as the striatum. Its job is to just do something what it has done before. Regardless of it being right or wrong, it is no idea. It basically operates on the if the principle that's used in the software coding. Uh, an example would be like if you pick up a hot drink, you don't gulp it down, you first take a tiny sip and you check the hotness and if it's okay to drink it. If you've done something n number of times, its job is to keep doing that time and again and run on autopilot mode. That is why if once you've developed a good habit, it has the power to take that on autopilot mode and change your life. Now that you know all the three brains, you know when you're preparing, planning, and getting ready for that important meeting, that important interview, or that important exam, you're operating out of your human brain. But when you're actually in that exam, writing that paper, giving that interview, or delivering that presentation, you might be stressed and you might be operating out of that monkey brain that doesn't know how to plan, how to prepare, or it wasn't there when you were learning and preparing. So here's the fundamental reason why I got anxious while I was working on the PPT. When I was planning the PPT, my three brains were talking to each other. My thinking brain probably was running simulations of the future and asking the feeling brain, the monkey brain, how I was feeling about it. And until everything seemed calm, the monkey brain was less activated and the prefrontal cortex, the human brain, was taking and leading the charge. But the moment I had a negative thought, what if I was not able to do everything on time, the monkey brain came and activated with the stress and the prefrontal cortex, the human brain got less active and from planning and decision making, I went down to anxiety worry and a loop of inaction and indecisiveness. So the key to understand is that when you are in stress, you're operating from your monkey brain and that generates an away or an escape response. And the key to understanding stressful situations and making them more familiar with you is how you keep your prefrontal cortex, the human brain activated, even in difficult times. So the key is to understand that stressful situations activate your monkey brain, which generates an escape or an away response, and thus traps you in anxiety and indecisiveness. And that is why you need to influence stressful situations and make them less stressful. The best way to do so is to embed a lot of stressful situations in your habit brain by practicing and exposing yourself to stressful situations in a control setting and gradually increasing the level of difficulty. For example, the Indian Army stress exposure training involves a lot of mock fighting and scenario-based training that puts soldiers into war-like situations. And by doing this, they keep their limbic system, the monkey brain, less activated and the thinking brain more activated because they believe that they've been in these situations previously. And that is why with their habit brain support, they're able to create a toward response and plan logically and win the war. So whatever problems you have, an interview that's upcoming and is very important, an exam that you're preparing for, 
or a project that you're working on by exposing yourself into stressful situations in a controlled setting and embedding stressful situations in your habit brain, you will be able to face those situations more strategically and operate out of your human brain when you're actually living those moments. Remember, stress is not necessarily a bad thing. It is whether you deal with it with your monkey brain or your human brain is the key. I will talk about this more in my next lesson. But what separates successful people from ordinary people is that they have mastered their ability to keep their human brain activated even in the most dark times, in the most stressful situations. Over time, they have mastered this art and embedded this in their habit brain. And whenever they are into a difficult situation, they are on autopilot mode, working from their human brain and the habit brain. If this was helpful, Hit the like button, subscribe and think with resume.